Hey, Good Life Riders, welcome back. Today we are going to continue our discussions on comparing the GoPro Hero Max and the Insta360 ONE X2. Today we are going to talk about the computer software and show you a little comparisons of how the two of them work. So, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show! Good Life Riders, how do you like that little change that we have of camera views? All done with the Insta360 ONE X2. So, um, if you are considering buying a 360 camera, one of the important things you'll want to know is the software aspects. You know, you can research and do lots of research on determining what Man, there was that skunk again. Um, you can do lots of research on, you know, this one has a 5K and does 120, a 3K, and blah, 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 blah. Which comes into play. That's one thing that's a little odd with the Insta360, but that's another video. But unless you are going to do nothing with your videos, or unless you are only going to do mobile stuff, with your videos then if you're going to do that then go ahead and click up above and check out the video that we did last week where we talked about the mobile apps but if you are going to actually do editing of your ride for um, yourself or posting on YouTube or for whatever um, more than likely, at one point in time, you're going to need to use the software on your computer for editing. And unless you are an editing guru and have the Adobe Suite, you more than likely will at some point in time use the GoPro Player for the GoPro or the Insta360 Studio and today we want to give you a little bit of a look of how to use those little bits of software. So we're going to take some rides that we did here recently and I'm going to go in and show you the editing side of those. So sit back and enjoy and if you have any questions about the software or about the cameras please put it down in the comments below because um, we'd love to have more topics to do on these cameras because I love using them so let's go to that footage okay we're going to show you here a little bit of the Insta360 studio 2021 version 4 so it is a considerable upgrade from the original footage that i made the video for up above i'll link it up above you can check it out and you can see how the interface has changed considerably so we'll start out with this footage this is some footage that i took saturday on our ride and as you see, when you click and make one of the keyers, this is each of these little spots here are considered keyers. When you make those, it gives you the options for how you want to set up your footage here. So as you can see there, it changes those. You can also, if you go in here, uh, 
You can use the pinch function on a laptop to be able to change it. But I like going in and setting it up according to these and then actually going in here and marking. So if I want to if I want to zoom out more, I'll actually just click on it. Sometimes it has um, I haven't quite figured out why, but sometimes it acts a little goofy and won't actually take to what the settings are that I've set. But that's how it sets up, and then you actually can hit the space bar, or you can hit the, the pause, the, the play button right over here, to make it start playing. And then when you get to points where you want to make a move or a change, you can go over here and hit your key here again, or you can see you can use Control k to bring that up. And then you can make all of your changes, whether you want to go Tiny Planet, whether you want to have a, uh, a default setting or a more natural setup of a camera. And each time you make those changes, you can see how it changes your footage. And it's, and it's really, really easy. You can go over here, you can change your ratio. If I wanted to do set up for a TikTok, I could set it up there. And if I wanted a different setting, one by one or a four by three, I can make all those settings. Um, if I wanted to run this in full screen and I knew all my, my keyers that I could use and not have to have them written here on the, you know, on all the hotkeys, I could run them here. If I went to full screen, if I wanted to take a picture, a snapshot of this, I can click right there or use control S. Now I'm also going to show you, um, so this is some footage here that I shot on another day. And there's an interesting thing with this footage. If you notice when I start running, see how you can see the line? It was kind of dark out that night. And uh, let's go to here a little bit further into the footage where it really shows up more. And I'll show you this. Um, did it change it? Oh, yeah, that's why. Okay, well, I'm going to take these back off because that's what made the change. So see how here how you can see the line in the footage really well between the two cameras? I'm going to hit a control K and I'm going to go to a tiny planet so you can see one camera and the other camera lens. Now we'll come back down. Now, the thing I found out with this is I've, I've never seen my footage do this before. So I had to go up here to the stitching area, turn on the dynamic stitching and the chromatic calibration, and then I hit a, a calibration to run through its little deal. and now, the way that was set, it's almost gone. When you had actually rendered, you don't, don't even notice that. Now, one other aspect is when you go to exports, when you bring up your export settings within the Insta Studio 2021 footage before whenever I would do the Color Plus, or the remove grain, if I would select those AI effects and go to export, it would totally crash the, the software. But now when I hit those, it actually does what it's supposed to do. It fixes the color and it removes the grain and makes it a sharper image. So I wanted to show you that. Okay, we're gonna try and show you this. I'm gonna record it with, from the, from a camera, it's not working well. The GoPro player software doesn't allow me to do a screen capture. So we're gonna set up and show you how this software works in comparison to the Insta360. I'm gonna hold a little bit and then I'm also gonna go down there. Uh, so as, as you see, there's up above, there's your 360 view of it and then also your key keyers view and then down at the bottom is when your keyers start to show up we'll set a keyer here and kind of show you how when you set it with this program 
notice when you set a keyer, it doesn't tell you really anything about how the how the view is set up. Everything is done based on how you want it to look. So there are keyer key options. So if I hold down, um, you also can see them over here to the side. So if I hold down Control and R, it levels it. If I hold down Control, I can make it rotate. And if I hold down Alt, I can zoom the camera. So I'll show you what that means. So if I hold down Control, see how we can kind of rotate our footage here? And Control R will level it again. And then I can just grab it and move around the footage. And then if I hold down Alt, I can zoom in and out of the footage. And then um, when it comes to doing things like the tiny planet, we zoom all the way out. And then uh, that's the inverse. Here's your tiny planet. I'm going to move off of this. Uh, play just a little bit. So there you can see how the tiny planet kind of looks. But everything is done with regards to this side of the software is done with you holding down alt, moving into the footage, or moving around it. So if I get myself all jacked up, on my view sometimes it takes a little bit to get it back to normal and then one other kind of neat thing with this is when you're within one of these and you've already made a keyer you can go up here and this is where this is where you set how your transition is going to occur so if I want it to be an immediate jump cut, I'll show you here how that will go. So when I get to the end of that plane, watch how it will make an immediate jump cut. Which probably isn't the best type of transition for this particular setup. See there, it made a boom, an instant. Then you got to go back into it and change it. Now, if we go to it, we will see that it's slowly making that change. So then you just move along the footage. When you decide you want to make a change in your how it's how it's being viewed. Come on, where are we at? Go to here. My computer's being is stalling out a little bit right now. We'll let it play forward a little bit. Let's say boom, I want to change to that way. I can do that. And then if you want to move into your I'm using my little mouse roller. And I can zoom into my timeline or zoom out of my timeline. That's how you do that. And then you can just pull and slide along. And then there's options down here at the bottom for cutting it. And there's options here for taking a snapshot. But if you notice, this software doesn't have a lot of the other extra editing things that the Insta360 does. So you can't make it lighter and all that kind of stuff. Like we had on the mobile app of the Insta360. So neither the GoPro Player or the GoPro Quick gives you that option. So then when we want to, uh, when, if, we, if we took this and we cut it down
to a short piece. We can see that, that it shows us on this that that piece is 2 minutes and 11 seconds. So that whole section that we have there is 2 minutes and 11 seconds. Then we can go up here to the top and say export. And then we can set up how we want to do our export. If there's any other kinds of things we want to do. And we can say next and tell it where we're going to save it to on our computer. And that is how it works with the GoPro player. Hey, so just wanted to end this video, tell you that hope you learned a little bit about the way the software works and hopefully that gives you a little bit better idea. Uh, some people have said the editing is a little cumbersome. It's not cumbersome, it takes a little bit of work, but actually, you know, you could take probably the, if you're going to do a basic video, you can get a multi-view, um, a multi-view motovlog using the Insta360 from the Insta360 software and not even have to buy another type of software. For me, when I edit, I generally, other than the 5-Minute Friday, where we use the, um, where we use that 360 footage and the, the one where we did the Insta360 360, 360 video, um, the use of another editor is generally necessary. But I was able to do that 360 video and the other one with just the Insta360 video. Both of the last two 5 Minute Fridays, as you can get from the link up above or go to the 5 Minute Friday playlist on the channel. So, thanks for watching. We will bring you some more videos covering some other topics of the 360 cameras in the future. But next week, I'm going to bring you a special video as to why I'm in this group today. Till next time, keep the sunny side up, keep the rubber side down, and have an utterly awesome day.